ok so we have made all the major parts for the micro gentle lady and this is an important section because this is all about sanding which is going to then lead on to covering uh, I'm going to go over the sanding I mean for experienced people uh, that they perhaps might want to just jump this little bit of video but it's one of those sort of things that when you're doing the sanding that you just need to be careful about what you're actually doing because it's as much as the sanding is actually holding the structure and bracing the structure because at the moment because it's not covered it's still quite fragile so I just want to go over the points so I'm going to do the fuselage then we'll go on to the wings and then we'll go on to the tail plane and the rudder so I'm just going to run through a few things that you can buy do it fairly cheaply you don't have to buy expensive tools uh, but I just want to emphasize on this because if we can do this properly one it means that uh, you're not going to get broken that you've actually broken your model while you're actually trying to sand it which is an easy thing to do at the moment but also you're going to end up with quite a nice finish so let's just go through some of the sanding options okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at doing the uh, fuselage and we've got a little bit down with the sheeting of the sides to do and obviously the nose now let's just have a little talk through some of the things that you can actually get you can buy one of these what they call microplaners uh, it's got a little razor blade on and the idea is it just works like a normal blade and you can go down there like so now you need to be very very careful because you can get this wrong very very quickly a uh, little tip with these if you're using these and when you're not using it always leave it on its side if you leave it laying flat you're actually damaging and blunting the blade and putting it out of square so a little tip there Always, if you do get a micro blade, I think they're about 15 20 pound. You can use one of those, you have to be very careful with that. Um, don't forget, we can still use our uh, nail files, a um, little bit long winded, but can work. Um, my favorite is I've just got a little bit of block of wood there, and all I've done is now this is a P180 grit at the moment, so it's quite gritty. Um, so the idea is, is the lower the number, so if you get down to say like, you know, 150, it's very, very rough. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this um, P180, and then I've got some little bit of emery here, and I'm going to make everything nice and smooth. This is P400, which means that it's actually a lot, lot finer. You could go even higher, but I think this is going to be perfect for the job. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to, and you notice I'm going in one way. You've got to be careful, if you start doing that, you can end up um, getting a little sort of curve in it. Also, if you go that way and then come back up and you just happen to catch the end of the fuselage, you'll end up folding it in half. So like I was saying earlier, just be aware of where the actual sander is going and where the forces are that you're actually putting into it. So I've just given that a couple of wipes. Uh, just a good feel. I'm going to do exactly the same. Now, what I've done is I've just finished this to a nice smooth finish. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the very last bit to finish it with the 400. There we go. That looks nice. A little bit more there. Lovely. Now, I'm not rolling the edges over on this at the moment. I'm going to do that with the 400. Now I'm just again bracing the fuse large and then I'm just coming forward. See with the 400, sorry with the uh, the 180 it actually doesn't take long but I'm just stopping short of the nose because we need to talk about that in a moment. There you go, see with the P180 it really doesn't take that long. Uh, the same this side. The nose. My advice for doing the nose is, there's no real golden rule, but for me, I'm going to start by doing the undersurface, like so. I'm going to hold it like that and I'm just going to and can you see how I can see where it's being warm it gives me an idea of um, if I'm too far to the left or too far to the right. Um, you can do it on the end of the bench. You 
can also do this on the end of the bench like so. Now I've roughly, it's not perfect, but that's just, I can feel it, there's hardly, there's just a little edge there. Now I've done the under surface, I'm now going to do exactly the same on the top surface. And you notice I'm only going down one way, I'm not going backwards and forwards, and I'm making it in a controlled stroke. And how I'm, I'll, because I've got the nose off the end of the bench, it's allowing me to come down. If I have it on the bench like so, then it's harder to actually get that end piece. So with the nose over the end, let me just get my hand out of the way so you can see. I'm actually just doing that now. You know, it'd be very tempting to get like this and smash through it really quickly, but it's just worth taking some time. And I would suggest once you've got through the sort of about halfway through the nose. Just stop and have a look, look down it, just to make sure that we are actually getting quite a nice, neat square job. So say, I'm doing top and bottom first. Done the top, done the bottom. Just had a quick look down the sides. It's nice and square. Now, what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna do the left and the right of the fuselage in the same way. But notice how I'm just bracing the fuselage, but I'm holding it just over the... I mean, if you want to, um, if you're feeling brave, you can actually cut some a bit of this to start off with. But I think it, it's worth, with this small size, it's actually worth just sanding off. It won't take that long. The thing to do is just to make sure to stop every now and again and check that it's not going out of square so it might be worth um, just doing a bit one side and a bit the other side just to make sure that it ends up being pointy okay so I've gone over the whole fuselage with the P180 now I've just stapled the P400 uh, I'm just going to go round and you'll notice I'm going round I'm just rounding those edges off um, in a well ventilated area um, it's a little bit difficult at the moment because it's uh, only 4.3 degrees outside but anyway look at that lovely and smooth and uh, that's going to put that away safely and that's now ready to be covered and for the gear to be installed next thing the wings so I've got an outer tip panel here because the inner panel is going to be exactly the same but we've got to go through doing this end tip and uh, so I would suggest right okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to resort back to using my P180 and what we want to do is you see how I've got most of the wings supported by the bench and all we need to do is we need to now if this was a bigger block I'd be tempted to try and carve this like this but you do have to be careful so I'm just removing a bit of that now like so but if you're not sure or you're worried about your knife skills, don't just do spend a bit more time with the sandpaper. So again, just the block on the outside. And now what I'm going to do is I'm now sanding this. Just having a little feel to see where it is. But I've just got the block. There we go. And this needs to be flush with that rib, or very close to that rib. Now, little tip, when we're going backwards and forwards with this, and we're getting close to the uh, spar, be careful you don't end up sanding this main spar away. So always be careful about where your sanding is actually going, 
and just be careful that you don't end up damaging stuff that you, you don't see at the time. So, for the time being, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to have it out there like so. Right. I'm happy with that. Now, the other thing we need to do is we just need to round the leading edge off. So again, you could, if you wanted to, very gently go up and down here with a micro planer, but I'd be very, very careful with this such a small structure. I mean, you can actually go up and down there, but I'd be very careful. Um, it would only take one or two passes like that. Uh, see how that look, how that's catching and making the structure bend. So it's possible, but you have to be careful. I would favour um, just doing this. And again, just be careful that when you're sanding, you don't hit it here. So when you're sanding, like so, you don't end up hitting the sander here and smashing it into that rib and taking that rib out. You really have got to think about where your sander is going to go. So well, the idea is we're just going to round this edge off. There you go. You see I've got the whole of the wing supported either by my hand or by the bench. So that's the top bit done. That's the top bit sanded. And now I'm going to do exactly the same on the lower wing. But see how I'm actually supporting the wing. So the idea again, as I say, again, you could if you wanted to, you could go down with your planer, but I honestly would say, now, you have to remember that we want the bottom part of this fairly flat, and it's the top part which has got all the curve. So, Yeah, the last thing you want to do is just have a feel round. So, the last thing you want to do is just have a feel round to see if you've only got little bits of glue which are coming out of the joints. The reason being is when you come to do the covering, they're going to stand proud and uh, make the covering look naff. So, I'm just going to go round now, and anything small which you find, you can use one of these just to remove, particularly if you've used super glue. But it's important to just to spend some time and just go round. See, so I've got a little one there. And I'm just going to, a little one now, I'm just going to clean that up, like so. <coughs> okay, one last thing with the wing sanding. Um, I've gone round the whole thing having used the uh, P180. I've gone round using the P400 and just made sure that I've got not got any sort of little bits of glue and anything that's sticking up. Uh, I've just given that a little bit of a lick on the trailing edge. That's what the leading edge looks like. It's got a lovely rounded finish to it. Now, the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the wing on the end of the table. I'm going to support it and with my P18, uh, P180 I'm just going to go a couple of times down here and then have a feel to make sure nothing is sticking out. So I've got a little bit of the spar is just sticking out there. There we go, just supporting it. There we go. What that will mean is, is that when we come to butt that up to the wing, there's going to fit nice and square. So that's one done. Another three panels to go and we'll come back and we'll do the uh, tail plane and the elevator. Right, these are the last three, sorry, three, four things we're going to need to sand. Um, we're going to need, this is the uh, tailplane, it's the elevator, and that's going to go on there like so. And this is the rudder, and that's going to go on there. My apologies. 
that's going to go on there like that. Now, we need to sand these in a particular way. Um, they're very thin. I honestly don't believe that you have to go majorly over the top sanding these to an aerofoil shape. But let me just give you some idea. Now, I don't have an art degree, so you'll have to bear with me. Uh, so let me just show you. Um, what we're really looking to do for the tailplane is just round the edge off and taper the rear. So in other words, what we're going to do is just a round aerofoil edge on the front and what we're going to do is just a very small taper to the back of here. Um, there is some hinging that we're going to talk about. So what I would suggest is, is like I've shown on the um, rudder hinge here, what we want to do is we're going to taper one of these slightly because if they're butted square, what will happen is, is that um, we won't be able to get them to move up and down. So if you, let me just show you, see if this works. If that is looking like that to start off with, what we really want to do is just, we can either roll it off like that, or the other thing we can do is, uh, if that's the top, what we can do is we can just taper. Um, so that's the back of that elevator. That we're actually going to just taper the undersurface about that angle. That then allows us to get full down movement as much as full up movement. Um, I, said that, I said I wasn't an artist, didn't I? Anyway, the rudder, what we're looking at is the rudder tapered back both ways and then the leading edge of the uh, rudder is, well the fin is just rounded off. Don't go mad with this, um, they're not massively thick anyway so I think they literally just round them off. So for the elevator I've got a little bit of P400 emery paper and I am just going to go around um, both sides. A little sand. You'll notice I'm only sanding one way. If I come back that way I'm going to end up folding it in half. But, um, they're very thin anyway, and I think we need to just be careful that we don't over sand these and weaken them. Okay, the leading edge of the fin, I'm doing the same thing like so. Yeah, I'm just supporting that. And then likewise this side. I'm almost sanding as much of the bench as I am the actual fin. So, and then, right, okay, so uh, the elevator, obviously what we want to do is, not the bit with the slot in, but the other side, we need to taper, like so. And you notice I'm just doing a couple of licks either side. And you notice I'm just going one way. Don't come back this way. I guarantee you, you will fold it in half. And I'm just going to change that round. Because you really want that tapered. I know I keep saying it, but don't go mad on this. Because uh, I don't think it's significant. Now, that's nicely tapered. The only other thing we do need to do now is we're going to put a round edge on like we've done with the rudder. And what I'm going to do there, I'm going to put that on there like so. I've got this steel ruler to support it so that the timber is just hanging off the end of the bench. I have the steel rule just to support it like so. And that's also easier for me to hold. And then all I'm going to do is a couple of lifts up and down. Turn that round, put the ruler on the top, like I said at the start the whole thing about this is just making sure that you're, uh, when you're sanding that you re you're realising the consequences of your actions. Um,
there you go um, exactly the same with the rudder uh, I'm just going to make sure that you've got the, the horn end so we need to taper from here down so again uh, in fact actually the rudder the ruler on here will really help Get it right to the edge like so, and then there you go. And then I'm just going to slowly work my way down like I did with the elevator. And then when we've done that, there we go. And the same thing with the uh, rudder. We're going to pop that on there like so. And I'm just going to round either edge. Now we could actually cut it at an angle like I showed you in the drawings. But um, the way I'm going to show you how the hinge is, either way will work. It's just, just a personal favourite. There we go. Now, quick lift with the pre 400. And we are now, everything is now sanded, ready for covering. Okay, rudder. Right, uh, fin, elevator, sorry tailplane, elevator, all the wings have been sanded, so the next step is we are going to glue the two halves of the wings and then the next process, the next video is going to be gluing the wings and covering.